Celebrate Life Cerebro in the in the uh, comments brought up one that I remember as a kid. I was maybe 14 when this happened, around 1992, and I'm sure you remember it like it was yesterday. But um, Two Live Crew was probably one of, if not the first, label to or uh, you know a group to get uh, you know fined and arrested for the lyrics that they were putting out. Um, do you remember that time? Yeah, hell yeah. Talk to me about what you were thinking, you know, with this whole situation with Two Live Crew. Well, you know what, man? When Two Live Crew came out, dude, it was like, they were like, oh, shit. Because first of all, Two Live Crew was, that was all club music, okay? It was never meant to be on the radio. It was all club music, underground music, just like my buddies, NWA. They were never supposed to go to main, mainstream. Mm -hmm. NWA, they was playing to stay underground because underground had a whole different, whole different set of rules. And again, because content, because under, uh, the above ground, celestial radio was competing with underground. They wanted to bring things that were underground to the to above surface so they could have the exposure. When Two Live Crew was doing all they was doing, it was a major uproar, man. But the kids loved it. Cause hey, we want some be at the you know hey, and we played it in the club, played it in the club all the time. And you had it was at the time that that era, you had Freak Nick. Okay, y'all don't know about Freak Nick. I never went myself, but I heard stories. Okay, and Freak Nick was like the college version of uh, uh what what that stuff uh Elvis Presley had uh Beach Blanket Bingo. Only on some freak shit, okay? So you had all these brothers and sisters that was going to various parts of the country, uh, mostly Miami, and they put out there and they for for Easter vacation, and it will be going down. Mm. And the, Luke Skywalker's music like became the theme music of uh, Freak Nick. Doodoo Brown, you had Tag mm -hmm. Team, you had all those yep. all, all those songs. The high energy ninety five South, yep. That's when people were still. That's when you could go to a party and lose five pounds. You were so you were on some serious aerobics back then. <laughs> and but because of what they were saying again at that time, what Luke was saying was some major stuff, man. It was oh my god, he said the word p, the p word, the d word. Oh shit, my kids are going to be out here raping people. And you know, white kids loved it too. And that's when the white kids loved it. That's when that's when it becomes a problem. Oh mm -hmm. no. Judy and Jason cannot dance to this music. Oh my God, we can't do this. Mm -hmm. Oh no, my kids, my lovely kids. So all of a sudden, they hit them with a lawsuit. And they won the lawsuit. They hit them with a lawsuit. Luke Skywalker, I think it was about 89. Luke talked about this on Facebook a couple of, a couple of months ago. I saw an interview he did. He, he talked about it. What in the interview he was just talking about? It. He said all the people that benefited from his uh, lawsuit, ain't nobody offered him a dime. Ain't nobody offered to say, man, you're standing up for the culture. He said, man, I was out there by myself, okay? But he won. That's when he was still Luke Skywalker. Mm -hmm. The only thing he lost was the name, the right to use the name Skywalker. He had to go to Uncle Luke after that. Because Disney yeah. said, I, ain't, I can't mess with you. You cannot use that name associated with that music. He said, all right, fine, I'm Uncle Luke, okay? Mm -hmm. But he ain't never looked back since then. And that particular that particular uh, lawsuit changed hip hop forever because before then you had to have stickers on the records, the CDs mm -hmm. and stuff. You had the Walmart version and you had the street version. Well, guess what? Nobody bought the Walmart versions. Mm -hmm. Because at one point in time, y'all may not realize this, Walmart sold more records than anybody. Walmart was the number one record uh, retailer in the country, in America. Man. You got your records in the Walmart, you were slanging, okay? Mm. And in order to get them in the Walmart, you had to be Walmart standards. Walmart said no cussing. There will be none of that in here whatsoever. You will not be cussing next to our guns. It ain't going to happen, okay? Fuck that. We're not let y'all cuss next to our guns. And you had to have a sticker on your music. None of the none of the, um, the, the the adult versions were allowed in there, and but what happened was, as much as they tried to push it, everybody went to the swap meets, the mom and pops who who sold the street versions, 
and Walmart ended up returning all those records back to the um, back to the, the to the labels. Oh yeah, and labels was going broke. So when Luke did his thing, either one, if you don't want a Walmart, we understand. We got somebody else that'll sell it. Damn. And that's when the NWAs and everybody else came out. Now everybody was everybody was cussing because now there was it was no more a moratorium on uh on the, some seven deadly words. It was Damn. it was a hell of a time, man.